attention is the reason why you have a shaky bow. And this is something that I teach in my violin lessons all the time. If you're a violinist struggling with nerves, if you're struggling with tension and you have a shaky bow, well, have no fear. You are not the only one that struggles with this. And believe it or not, myself included, I have struggled with a shaky bow, but it all comes down to perception versus reality. What a shaky bow might sound under your ear may not actually may sound over out in the audience. So I want you to kind of start with that mindset of a shaky bow, that the shaky bow that's happening right under your ear may not be as bad as in the audience when you're performing. However, it's impossible to play with zero tension. Of course, there will be tension in your violin playing. I would be naive to tell you that you can play fully relaxed with the violin because for me, I have not discovered that. And if there's anyone that has discovered it, leave a comment down below. I wanna interview you. It all comes down to how we release tension on the violin because if you understand how your body works, if you understand how you release tension, that's going to help release the anxiety and the tension that's translated into your bow. And mind you, it doesn't matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed. I know a lot of left-handed violinists that are really successful with their bow arm, which is their right arm. So it doesn't matter whether you're a lefty or a righty, I just wanna make sure that we're establishing good healthy habits so that you can get a nice clean sound on your bow. We have to start off with the thumb. We have always talked about on this channel about a bendy thumb and a curved thumb. Now, you know, in plain English, it's whether you want to have a concave or a convex thumb. And I always encourage my students to have a convex thumb because what it allows you to do eventually is to have a nice solid bow grip when you're going left and right on the bow, even though you're marked up and down in the music, it technically is left and right. Just be mindful of that. And a lot of students tend to find trouble with gripping the bow. I'm going to ask a question that I ask all of my students. Who or what holds the violin bow? I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to really think about that. If you are thinking about holding the violin bow, of course this is called a bow hold, but if you think about it, if I relax my bow on the string, then I am actually having the violin hold my bow up and I can relax my hand over here along with a convex thumb over here. Maybe you can't see it, but this is a better look at this convex thumb. And that's going to help you really just solidify a good sound on your bow. So I would like you, if you have your violin with you, is to have your violin, you know, good posture, all that good stuff, and just relax the bow. And I want you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I want you to really just feel the shoulders and the arms and the elbows really going down. And if you have a curved hand like this and mind you I don't want any straight fingers I don't want any you know weird shape tension that's happening in my thumb I just want all the fingers to be bent outwards and then then you can pull the bow but if that doesn't work you're still having a lot of trouble with your tension then something that you might be noticing is the pronation what is pronation pronation is when you are really leaning into your index finger and you're pressing down and you can see and I'm actually not forcing that that's the natural uh, bow you may hear it a little bit I have the microphone right over here so that way you can hear very closely if I'm pronating and if I'm pressing into my thumb then I'm going to have a shaky bow because I'm applying all that tension by really holding the grip of the bow. Now remember, it all comes back to how we lay the bow on the string. If you're laying the bow on the string and you're just trying to relax, get a nice sound and a relaxed sound, it doesn't have to be loud. Don't worry about getting a loud sound. Students oftentimes are worried that, oh, it's too scratchy. I feel like I need to get a louder sound by pressing in and by pressing in a lot of students tend to prone it into their index finger and their pinky tends to dangle and then the reason why I don't like this method of teaching and playing of course is because it's really difficult to uh, have the wrist and the pinky bent 
later on. And I have a couple of videos that I'll leave in the comments down below in regards to bow hold. But this is just about shaky bows. So, you know, stay with me for a moment. So right now we have talked about the thumb making sure that it's convex, the bow making sure that it's not pronated, but I have, and actually if you can see my entire arm and my elbow actually shifts downwards so that my fingers are curved. And then, of course, I have many videos on collet. This is another reason why we do bendy pinky. That is the foundation of having a good solid bow hold, is having a solid collet. So that is a pretty advanced technique, but if you can set yourself up for success, eventually, eventually you'll be able to get to that point to doing collet on down bows and up bows. I always talk about bow distribution in my violin lessons for a variety of reasons. And this actually applies to the whole shaky bow topic. And if I'm doing a down bow, you may notice that I'm having a shaky sound when I go towards past middle bow. So if you're a beginner, if you're struggling with this, I encourage you to really dedicate your time to the lower half. Because the lower half is the heaviest part of the bow naturally because we have the frog. And if I'm working on exercises with the full bows at the lower half, then I'm not going to experience a shaky bow. If I'm doing full bows from the get-go, if I'm doing... You know, that is pretty advanced actually. I don't allow students in, when I teach Suzuki, I don't really allow them to do full bows until we get to maybe the minuet one or minuet three. I really don't do that because they haven't really established the awareness of the arm because it involves some kind of extension of the, the bicep, which I can talk about in a future video. Just leave a comment down below. I'm happy to talk about that element of violin playing as well. There's so many little nuances. You know, that's why I love explaining these things. That's why I love teaching the violin. So if I'm using a full bow and I'm applying tension with a concave and a pronated, then I'm not gonna have a secure sound. Not, not so much on the down bow because you can kind of get away with it on the down bow. But on the way up, you'll end up really feeling tight on the, on the frog. And I don't suggest that for a variety of reasons. So when you're doing a, a down bow, really make sure that you're preparing for the up bow. So if I'm doing a down bow and another up bow, I'm already preparing the motion to go down a little bit in advance. So let's dive into that element. So if I'm doing a down bow here and then I'm preparing to go down bow as I'm still doing the up bow. And all of that comes from my right shoulder and my elbow. And this is a great exercise to do when you are just practicing open strings. And I actually have a wonderful video for you when it comes to practicing open strings and relaxing and releasing tension with your bow and your sound. There's an exercise for that and it's created by Eugenie Zai who is a Belgian violinist. I have that exercise right over here, so take a look at. 